Ray, when I ask you where the American Revolution began, you'd say... Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts. Right. The first shots fired. The shot heard round the world. And not too many people would argue with you. And that was April 19th, 1775. And here we are, the United States of America now. Right. But as you can imagine, the first shot fired didn't really come out of nowhere. I mean, there were many, many events that led up to it. Oh, sure. Like the Boston Tea Party, for one. Right. Boston Massacre is another. Yep. Plus many other little things like uh, too many taxes, no saying government. I mean, it took years to build up that much tension. All very true. But the Boston Massacre was an example of the British shooting at the colonists. The story goes that the first shots in Lexington and Concord was the first time the colonists actually fought back against their oppressors. At least that's what we learned. Which makes me wonder why we're standing on the shores of Narragansett Bay in Warwick, Rhode Island. I mean, we're pretty far from Lexington and Concord. We are. But we're pretty close to where an act of violence against the British may be a more accurate first shot fired in the Revolution. We've come to Narragansett Bay to witness the burning of the HMS Gatsby. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 338 of the New England Legends podcast. And I'm Ray Osher. Thanks for joining us on our mission to chronicle all the weird history and strangeness that makes New England like no other place. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts because it's free and you don't want to miss a thing. Also, please tell a friend or two about our show and post a review for us. That's how we grow and get new episode ideas because most of our story leads come from you. So we'll go searching for the HMS Gatsby right after this word from our sponsor. Okay, Jeff, so we're talking about landing the first blows against the British in the Revolutionary War. We are. Okay. Now, to be fair, it's almost impossible to find the very first act of violence. I mean, there were dirty looks, there were <laughs> stones thrown, even murders of British soldiers, but those events didn't feel like an organized strike like Lexington and Concord or like what happened here off the shores of Narragansett Bay. Uh, depending on when the attack took place, it's either treason or an act of patriotism in a war of independence. That's exactly right. Now, if you lash out, get hanged or jailed for treason and nothing changes, you're a traitor. Do the same thing and overthrow the government, and you're a patriot and a hero. History is told by the winners. That it is. Now, to find out who won this round, and to learn how this stretch of beach we're standing on right now got the name Gatsby Point, Let's head back to the year 1772. It's March of 1772 here on the coast of Rhode Island. Tensions are rising with King George III. Now, I'd say they are. Now, Britain's still recovering from the French and Indian War and the Seven Years' War. Fighting wars is incredibly expensive. I mean, sure, Britain has gained a lot of new land, but they've also gained a lot of new debt. And one way to raise funds quickly is with, you know, new taxes and tariffs on your new subjects. Well, that's one way to win the hearts and minds of your new people. <laughs> right? Uh, so Britain's arguing that they need these funds to protect these distant colonies. Protection money. I, I get it. You, you pay for protection from, well, the, the British. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the occasional pirate. Mm. So the Crown decides to deputize the Royal Navy's sea officers to enforce the custom laws in America's ports. And enforcing custom laws is not why any person joined the military. No, not at all. I mean, it's not their job. Their job is defense, war, and hunting pirates and, and threats to their people. Not paperwork. Ugh. Yeah, no, you're right. But still, an order is an order. And one person taking that order seriously is Lieutenant William Duddingston of the HMS Gatsby. Now, one could say he's taking orders too seriously. Very true. Lieutenant Duddingston arrived in Narragansett Bay last month and began stopping just about every ship that came into the bay. Big ships, small package ships, it didn't matter. Lieutenant Dunningston is stopping them all, slowing down the business, and coming down for any infraction. All the sailors are frustrated. I mean, even if you're following the rules to the letter, it's a pain to have to stop and get searched by some overzealous lieutenant. It slows you down, and time is money. Of course, as with many ships, some captains bend the rules a little bit, maybe a little more cargo than what's declared. Perhaps a wee bit of smuggling. Nothing too grievous. I mean, everybody does it. Not under Lieutenant Duddington's watch, they don't. He's finding even the smallest infraction. And while you can complain all you want, you don't have a strong argument when you're the one technically breaking the law. But last month, Lieutenant Dunningston took it too far. Oh, what do you do now? Well, last month, the HMS Gatsby stopped to inspect a sloop called Fortune. 
Once on board, he seized about 12 hogshead of undeclared rum. So a hogshead is a barrel with about 55 gallons. Right. So we're talking hundreds of gallons of rum. And I'm willing to bet the locals took that one personally. Yeah, that they did. And the situation turned from bad to worse when Lieutenant Duddingston sent the fortune on to Boston for trial. Uh, okay, I got it. That's what causes a problem more than just confiscating the booze. The Rhode Island Royal Charter states that any arrest that takes place within Rhode Island has to also serve trial within Rhode Island. So Lieutenant Duddingston is overstepping now. And the word has reached Rhode Island Governor Joseph Wanton. And he's mad. Yeah, that he is. One thing that makes Rhode Island a little different from some of the other colonies is that its original charter states the people of Rhode Island can elect their own officials. The challenge for the elected officials is that they need to serve their people who elected them, but also their king. That isn't always an easy line to walk. But in this case, it's clear that Lieutenant Dunningston has overstepped. The people are angry. And so Governor Wanton fires off an angry letter. Did you see the letter? No. What's it say? Okay, I was able to get a copy. Uh, Rhode Island Governor Wanton says, and I quote, A considerable number of the inhabitants of this colony have complained to me of your having, in a most illegal and unwarrantable manner, interrupted their trade by searching and detaining every little packet boat plying between the several towns. As I know not by what authority you assume this power, I have sent off the high sheriff to inform you of the complaint exhibited against you and expect that you do, without delay, produce me your commission and instructions. If any you have, which was your duty to have done when you first came within the jurisdiction of this colony. It sounds like he's setting up Lieutenant Dunningston for some potential formal charges. It does. Lieutenant Dunningston responds in writing. He says, Sir... Last night I received your letter informing me that a number of inhabitants of this colony had complained to you of my having a most illegal and unwarranted manner interrupted their trade by searching and detaining every little packed boat plying between several towns. In answer to which, I have done nothing but what was my duty, and their complaint can only be founded on their ignorance of that. I am being sent to this government to assist the revenue and had my commission to show you if required. As it was ever understood by all of His Majesty's governors, I have the honour to wait on that every officer commanding on of his majesty's vessels were properly authorized. The officer I sent is equally qualified and has been in the boats of boarding most of the vessels and gave you any information relative to my proceedings. Sir, your humble servant, William Dunningston. So now we have a little bit of an impasse. Lieutenant Dunningston claims he's acting on orders of the king, and the elected governor of Rhode Island is trying to fix a problem for his people. It makes for a tense spring around Narragansett Bay. It's the evening of June 9th, and Lieutenant Duddingston and the HMS Gatsby is chasing down a packet ship called Hannah. A packet ship is a small vessel meant to haul mail, cargo, and people shorter distances. The Hannah is quick, and it looks like she's going to give the much larger HMS Gatsby the slit. Oh, look, so the Hannah's racing pretty close to shore, uh, almost daring the HMS Gatsby to follow. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, look at that. The HMS Gatsby just ran aground in the shallow water. And the Hannah is going to get away. It doesn't look like the Gatsby is damaged, though. She's just beached. Lieutenant Duddingston is furious, but not out of the game by any means. He'll just have to wait for tomorrow's high tide in the hopes that he can free the ship. With the HMS Gatsby stuck, some Providence locals get an idea. Led by John Brown himself, a group of five men see a way to solve many of their seafaring problems. Just before dawn, they board a rowboat and row up to the HMS Gatsby. The men quietly board the ship. A few of the crew are struck with hand spikes. And that's when Joseph Buckland of John Brown's boarding party spots Lieutenant Duddingston. Buckland draws his pistol. He just shot Duddingston right in the crotch. Oh, it's going to hurt. Duddingston and his crew are invited to leave the ship, and the men do so without much fuss. 
After poking around the HMS Gatsby for a few minutes, John Brown and his crew finally do what they came here to do. After setting the HMS Gatsby ablaze, John Brown and his men row back to shore and watch the Gatsby burn down to the waterline. A few days later, the wounded Lieutenant Duddingston is arrested for seizing a cargo illegally, and he's sent back to England for court-martial. And that brings us back to today. So, the first shot fired in the Revolutionary War kind of wasn't at Lexington and Concord. It was almost three years earlier and aimed at the nether regions of one Lieutenant Dunningston. <laughs> it's so difficult to pinpoint where a war truly starts. <laughs> I mean, clearly tensions had been building all over. I guess we call Lexington and Concord the first shots fired because the war spread far and wide after that, hmm. whereas the HMS Gatsby incident was more isolated. War was coming, and I'm sure the king realized that if he let the Gatsby incident sort of slide by, it would release enough tension that the people of Rhode Island's coast might calm down for a bit. The plan worked. It bought the king almost three years. Right. Yeah, fair enough. So John Brown would go on to be one of the founders of Brown University in Providence. And this piece of land at Narragansett Bay is now called Gaspy Point as a reminder of where Rhode Islanders took a stand against tyranny and oppression and took a shot at one annoying British soldier's um, crown jewels. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's what happened. And that takes us to After the Legend, where we dive deeper into this week's story and sometimes veer off course. After the Legend is brought to you by our Patreon patrons. If you enjoy two episodes each week from us, please thank a Patreon patron. They're the backbone of everything we do. They help us with our hosting costs, production, marketing, and travel. The only thing missing from this amazing group of people is you. It's only three bucks per month, and for that, you get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. Just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. And to see some pictures related to this week's story, including the original letters written by Lieutenant Duddingston, click on the link in our episode description, or go to our website, click on episode 338. Many things lead up to a war, always. I would think that everything we learned in the history books as far as the start of something, was not the start of something. Well, when you're telling a story, you got to jump in somewhere. Right. Right? And I would say... I what's it, the sexiest starting point? Right. What's 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 the point of conflict that you, I get your attention and start the, you know... And then you need a catchphrase, like, the shot heard around the world. The shot. What? Good marketing. Yeah. Um, so we, we did a whole episode on the Boston Massacre. Yeah. And, of course, um, everybody knows. Like, if, if you picture the, the print... Mm. Uh, of of the Boston Massacre, what you're picturing is what Paul Revere published. Right. Uh, Paul Revere made this print of like a bunch of soldiers angrily lined up and just gunning down innocent, you know, uh, colonists who are begging, please don't shoot. Right. Uh, a little but, bit of propaganda in there, or, or a what? lot of bit of propaganda. <laughs> so when when we covered the real story, all the journals of the time talked about how like the the drunken colonists had left the pub and were throwing ice and rocks at the soldiers, and yeah. they were afraid for their lives. Now I've spent time in Boston. I believe that story. <laughs> it checks out. <laughs> I have. I've been in a Boston bar or two. After and, uh, like a World Series game or oh, something? Oh, <laughs> dear God. Imag imagine if the Sox had just played a World Series and the British soldiers were right outside. Yeah. Everybody's watching it on the flat screens, right? right? And they come out of the, the bar. All hyped up. Oh, they would have they would have been dead. Yeah. That, that would have been the Boston Massacre, but the other way. Right. right? Like yeah. all the British soldiers were like, you know, killed by, by the bare oh. hands of, of celebrating uh, Bostonites. Yeah. Bostonians. So, uh, so no, I, I, I get it, right? So, yeah, definitely some propaganda. But, you know, all of these things were happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was incidents all over where you're just like, dude, we've had enough of this. And, and I think about it. I mean, in a different time, the, the, the Royal Navy, the king may have come down hard mm -hmm. and been like, no, you need to hang everybody associated with this because... Right. I mean, geez, like you don't you don't ever touch a British officer. That's like attacking the king. But nothing happened. Right. Right. They they were just like, Yeah, okay, you burned the ship, we arrested the guy, you shot him literally in the groin, mm. you know, and, and we're gonna take him home and court martial him like, You're right, let's just let this calm. Right. And everyone's like, Okay, all right, you learned your we taught you. We yeah. we, we punched back, you took your blows and you left. Um, but it could have absolutely the war could have started that day. That was Rhode Island. 
That's Rhode Island. Then they came up to Massachusetts. Right. And we weren't taking it up here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's where it started. But think about it. Like, had had they sailed a bunch of ships in and said, we're arresting everybody, and everybody's like, that's it. It's on. Yeah. Right? Now we're throwing hands, right? right. I mean, let's fight. That would have been that would have been the first shot. Mm. But I think the king let it let it slide. Um, the first shot would have taken on a whole new meaning, <laughs> too. The, Imagine those history books. Hundreds of gallons of rum. Yeah. <laughs> but where he shot them, too. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, it's too silly for a history book, I think. Well, you can't put it in a kid's book. Like right? the, the shot heard around the world, like <laughs> aimed right at the crown jewels. All the jokes. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't end. That so it makes you wonder about the marketing of the time, though, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, because I think we, we think about that every day now, how we're going to market even our lives. Anything. How we market ourselves on social media. Yeah. Do you think they had the, uh, the ability to do that back then? Or was it like, how are people going to perceive this? Well, they did. Uh, because of course, with the Boston massacre, well, that's that was, true. That yeah, was that right. was social yeah. media, right? You had you had lithographs printed. And it just took three months, and it went to viral. get it everywhere. That's right. And that's viral. <laughs> that was viral back then. Right. Three months. Yeah. Have you seen it in the paper? Have you seen this print? Yeah. People were buying the prints and putting it up, and that's, you would believe what you saw. That's right, because it looked realistic, right. and it's color and all that other stuff. And you're like, oh my gosh! And that must have been they, somebody that was there. Look at what they did to us. Yeah. And that that print. We, we've said it before in that other podcast, you know, like that print did a lot mm. to fuel the fire of everybody saying, yeah, enough of this. We we can't be under British oppression anymore. Right. And so, um, yeah. And, and also I do want to mention uh, my buddy, Carl Hutchinson, who like, you know, proper Brit lives in England and the whole thing. And I've hung out with him many times and it's cool. Like I've got friends that I can call on and be like, Hey Carl, I need, I need you to do a voice for a British soldier. And he's like, mm. yeah, yeah, no worries. And I said, you're not going to like how the story ends <laughs> for your character. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I think I, I ended my email with USA, USA, USA. <laughs> they might be over it by now. He's I over think they're, it. They're He's okay. Plenty over it. We've had drinks. We're cool. Uh, and they weren't, the drinks weren't tea, but, um, <laughs> but we had, we had fun. But no, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing story. And Gatsby Point, I think a lot of people don't know this one. Don't, yeah, don't I know about this. Years, years before the first shot fired, I mean, that first shot went, found its mark. <laughs> and, and think and about then it. Some. Think of how much more effective. I mean, sometimes, you know, letting... Oh, look, if you're alive and get yeah. shot in the groin, yeah. you're going to remember that. You, you're the, not going to... Yeah, you're going to behave after that, I think. He goes to England and they're like, yeah, they shot me. Where? Mm. Oh, my. <laughs> do you really want to get in a war with these people? I don't think we do. I think yeah. we just pull out. Let me, yeah, let's put it this way. We're not going to visit the brothel tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this isn't uh, isn't going well for us. If you've got a strange tale, we simply must check out. Email us anytime through our website. We're always searching for weird stories of odd history, ghosts, monsters, aliens, roadside oddities, true crime, and all the other great strangeness that makes New England like no other place. Plus, when you tell a few friends about the show, the amount of people searching for stories grows. So help us out if you can. Also, download our free New England Legends app in your app store and join us in our New England Legends Facebook group. We'd like to thank Carl Hutchinson for lending his voice acting talents this week. Very convincing British yes. accent. Uh, thank you to our Patreon patrons. Thank you to our sponsors. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think.